is up you guys welcome back to my channel it has been oh how long has it been y'all it's been about two weeks maybe a week in some change but it feels like no it had to be two weeks it's been two weeks since i've uploaded on my channel and it's just been a crazy little time y'all know i'm in school for my doctorate and so it's been an interesting few weeks just trying to tie up the end of the semester and it's still not over so I can't promise my consistency but I wanted to come on here today to have a transparent moment but also to celebrate let's just start off with a celebration for 800 whole subscribers oh my gosh like you guys are incredible I cannot really believe that we're at 800. I don't know, I guess I, I saw this um, platform growing, but it's just really exciting to have so many of you all on board. I'm sorry if you've joined since the two weeks and are like, okay, where are her uploads? Like, where are her videos? I'm sorry, I hope you've gone back and watched some of my other videos in the meantime. But thank you all so much for joining the family. I'm definitely planning to do a, not a super big giveaway because I am rich like these big YouTubers that you follow, but I will do a giveaway for 1,000 we're already at, I think, 840. So if y'all are on board, help me get to 1,000. And at that time, I'll be so excited to do a giveaway that I hope you all will enjoy. Um, and I actually want to shout out the last few um, subscribers that have joined recently just to tell y'all how much I am so grateful for you. And of course, I can only see the ones that are public. Unfortunately, if you subscribe and you're a private account, it doesn't actually show me your name. But the last few public people, shout out to Valerie Blanks, Nancy Wekesa. I'm so sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, shout out to Taisha113. Shout out to Tammy Lynn. Shout out to Hope Breezy, Missy Galise, Jillies, I'm sorry, Jade McMillan, Galen Jackson, shout out to Miss Dark Skin 83, shout out to the Dark Skin, yes, <laughs> DBC World, Kimberly Sims, Medjean, Delva, y'all, I am so sorry if I'm tearing your name up. And I'll shout out these last two, shout out to Betta Plowden, and L'Oreal Allen. Shout out to all of you. Thank you all so much for following the channel. I really hope that you're enjoying my content. So let's talk about what we're here for today. I want to have a transparent moment with you all that honestly probably a bunch of you clicked on this like, wait, what? I don't get it. Because y'all know Jesus is all up through, in between, all around my channel. Um, I do not play. Me and Jesus are. That's my homie. That's my dog. Even when I'm not consistent and not faithful, he always is and I really appreciate my relationship with Christ and I emphasize that word because that plays a role into today's topic but um yeah I'm coming on here to have a transparency moment with you guys and in my heart of hearts I'm a little nervous um just because I always try to have a video that extends hope even if I talk about a rough issue I'm giving hope I'm giving you know some kind of encouragement through that message and so I hope that comes through today um, cause I don't want to just get on here and vent and complain and then leave you with that because I feel like that will mess up your spirit and just, it doesn't leave you better than like how I found you. So that's not my goal for today, but I am being transparent about my experience recently and just kind of what's been revealed to me in that and where I am right now. And hopefully it does encourage you. So today's topic is about the fact that I, um, for the most part really haven't been to church for just over maybe a month. It might be honestly a little more than a month I really stopped counting um mainly because it hurt too bad to think about um but I did go to a service last Sunday um and that was my first time going to church I know for a fact in like over a month so I never thought I would be this person um I used to think about like especially when I was younger people not going to church like oh my gosh they didn't go to church like y'all don't understand I grew up I told people I was born on practically in the church building like obviously that's not true but I my childhood almost every day of my childhood there was some reason I was at the church because my mom was in ministry my dad was in ministry and two major roles in ministry so I was always there my friends were church friends I mean I had school friends as well but it just it was my life so we never missed a Sunday I think the only time we missed a Sunday was when we were on like family vacation which was always just one Sunday at the I mean every every <laughs> 
every Sunday. There was no missing a Sunday. I didn't know what that concept was. And I never thought that would be a concept for me. So how did I get to this point where I have spent pretty much over a month outside of church? Well, there's a few things that concern me. One being, I will start off in just being transparent that church has unfortunately been associated with a lot of pain in my life. Um, some of the worst pain that I've experienced and that I've seen my family experience was at the hands of church people. People who, you know, smiled in my face and our face who were, in my mind, family. Um, it, it never pulled me away from Christ because I can separate the fact that, you know, God, unfortunately, and then people who, who claim to be about God and to walk in his uh, way and to resemble him, but like the the evidence is in the fruit. So I it, it didn't pull me away from God, but it definitely made me look at church people sideways. And I really consider what happened then as like a wake up call for me, but just to look at church people with like a deeper, with a deeper lens, like not just accepting what you were given growing up, but to look at these folk and critically analyze the things that they're saying, the things that they're doing. And is the fruit there you know is there fruit to to what these people are doing or is it not does it not even look or sound like jesus <laughs> so yeah that that was the first time i started taking a critical eye to the church and so when i moved to uh columbus my goal was to find a church i had a church that i absolutely loved in chicago but unfortunately i wasn't there long enough to really get involved in ministry the way i wanted to um, so when I moved here, I was like, okay, you know, Columbus is less fast paced, you know, it's very much more like residential. I love Chicago, but like it's city, city, city. So here I was like, okay, you know, I can really like get involved in a church and like become part of a family of a church. And it's just, it's going to be great. You know, in my mind, it's just, it's going to be fabulous. And so I was attending a church pretty consistently here for almost over a year. And that entire time I felt like I was trying to jump through hoops and hurdles just to serve and just to be a part of the ministry. So I stopped attending consistently that place about over a month ago because of the fact that I felt like I was trying to beg for a connection, a church connection. So I, you know, did the like, new member classes so that you can get involved in ministry and I was on so many sign up sheets and um man i reached out to people on instagram dms that were ministry leaders i also went to the website and got the official emails for people and was emailing them i called sometimes you know i, I responded sometimes to when different things would come to my email and when i tell you all i can probably it's not yeah i can i don't even need my full one hand to count how many times i was responded to and out of those times something actually came out of it it was almost like they didn't they didn't want me to be a part. And of course it wasn't personal because people don't know me, but it just was like, why am I working so hard to be a part of the church body? Like, all I wanna do is serve. All I wanna do is use the gifts that I have for ministry. All I wanna do is go to church and not sit by myself for one Sunday, unless I'm bringing a friend from school or a family member. Like, I sat by myself for over a year, y'all in the same spot most times by myself like the only person that would speak to me is the person at the door you know greeting us and giving us our bulletin or if it, he had us turn to a neighbor which i don't really like turn into my neighbor so yeah i i would sit by myself at this place i love the presence of god i love being in the presence of the people of god i love to work if you know me honey i go for broke i love to worship i love that atmosphere it's so freeing it's so amazing but like why am i here if i'm sitting by myself so i was like okay i just yeah i don't think that's where i need to be um so that's one thing that was really concerning for me like it's almost like it's clicks like that other people have to break into like I have to break into the clique I have to show myself worthy of being in this clique for someone to give me an opportunity to serve and to be a part like we put this persona of church family out there but it's church family only for certain people it's church family if you already have a connection or if so and so brings you in the fold it's not connection for people who are just out here who don't know anyone who want to be a part that's not who it's for. So that was concerning for me. The next thing is that I have a really hard time with religion. I fully, I will stand here on this video and say I fully 100% reject religion. I reject religion. It is, it to me, is all about the man. It's all about a title, 
this fancy the fancy garb and the and the chain and you have to call me bishop you have to call me elder now and i'm you know i it's just it's so man focused i feel like god gets so lost in religion like he gets so lost in the routine and the service has to go this specific way like where is god in this and it just scares me how much we are okay with performing church it is so heavily religious and i just i can't i feel like once i got free from religion I, I can't go back. I can't I can't sit up under that. I can't be a part of that. Can I go to a, a Baptist service or a whatever denomination? I can, I can praise God at any denomination service. I really can. I've done it. I visit so many different kind of churches and I can, I can I can connect with Jesus. But do I want to be a part of that on a consistent basis and bring myself into that fold? Absolutely not. No, I just, I don't desire to play church. I, do, I don't desire to be religious and be worried more about your title than about Jesus. Sorry, it's just, I, I can't. Then what I feel like is the opposite of religious is this new trend of like popcorn church. And if you haven't heard that term, it basically is referring to like, you know how when you cook popcorn, you put it in, it pops, boom, boom, real quick, and then it's over. And it's done, you take it out, whatever. That is like this trend of church where it's like, it has to fit into 30 minutes like I only want to be at church for 30 minutes and then I'm ready to go home so these pastors have been pressured to reduce their their sermons down to like a 20 literally I heard a pastor get up and say all right I got 25 minutes and I was like huh like wait wait what worship is 20 minutes the sermon is 20 minutes we have announcements and then y'all are out and it's just like wait what well like was there any did we give time for the spirit to like have his way or was it all about our schedule and sticking to the time frame so that everybody can get out and honestly i think that's why it's hard for me because even in my generation i feel like people are more like they choose their church based on how short it is like i literally have gone to church with people where they're like you know oh girl we was in and out like that's amazing and it's like Wait, what? Like we sit through hours long college courses because somebody told us we have to in order to get this degree. There's people who will come early and leave late from a baseball game, which means you're, that's half a day, easily. But you're worried about church going any longer than an hour. Like I just, I don't like that trend. Personally, I, I mean, I don't like my time wasted where it's like, okay, if we're just sitting up here playing church for three hours and you're just keeping us here to pat your ego and not really to get a word across or to, to glorify God. But I have been in the presence of God where it's like, I don't want to move. I don't want to go anywhere. I'd be mad when they like, okay, we're going to close. No, let me lay on this altar for another hour if I feel like it. Like I enjoy the presence of God, so I will be okay with staying later or longer if it was for Jesus and for his spirit to move and really change hearts and change lives so I, I don't like popcorn church I literally went to a church where it's not funny but I was worshiping they played a song or they were doing a song I think it was Jesus you change everything and I'm in it like yeah it's like they built it up and child they built it up and then it was like this I mean cut and I was here and I'm looking around like, oh, oh, we done? And they was like, everybody take a seat. And when I tell you everybody in that room sat down with their coffee in hand, like, next. And I was like, oh. So literally I had to swallow that praise and have a seat because it was like, oh, okay, we like we don't do that here. Got it. And I just, I'm too, I've been too free in the presence of God to be in a place where I feel like I'm like my praise has to fit right here in this box and it can only look this way. And then I have to sit through only a 20 minute service and then I'm gone. Like I can't, popcorn church is not, that's not it. But it's like such a trend now. Like, oh my gosh. I feel like half the churches, if not more, are popcorn. It's like, I hope you got what you needed in this 20 minutes, deuces. Right. The next concern that I have about church right now is that I feel like pastors have a license to just say whatever they want to say over the pulpit and they get an amen. Um, me and my mom call them, well, not just me and my mom, but anyway, they call them bobbleheads, uh, bobbleheads. Because literally, like, if you can picture a room full of, like, bobbleheads sitting on, on pews, and it passed, so, like, no matter what you say to a bobblehead, the head is gonna shake, okay? It doesn't matter if you say something good or bad, a bobblehead is just going, like, agree, yes, 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 and bobble. 
that's what it is. That's what I feel like sometimes in service. Like, I've heard pastors say some crazy stuff across the pulpit where I'm like, like, I always listen with a critical ear because I'm like, I'm not just about to amen everything. Like, what? No, like, you are still human. And sometimes what you say across this pulpit is not right. That's not biblical. That don't sound like Jesus. That actually sounds racist, homophobic, misogynistic. I mean, it's just... Y'all are saying whatever you feel like saying and getting that amen. Like I've been in a sermon one time where a pastor said something real, real wild. I was looking around like that Kermit meme where it's just like, like, wait, what? Why are y'all admitting that? Did y'all hear what he said? Then it's scary because it's like, okay, maybe you admitting it because maybe you agree with what he said. Because, I mean, amen means to agree. So it's just really concerning to me that I just feel like pastors get to say anything and they get an amen. Like, no, no. I feel like we need to be listening with a critical ear, especially in these times. Like the Bible warns us about false prophets and people just getting up saying whatever and folk agreeing with them. Like, that's scary. Like, ooh. Then I also noticed this other trend that honestly, it also scares me. That pastors are being boastful or whatever about like, we got the best church in the city. I'm the best pastor. Like literally the church I was attending, they introduced him as the best pastor of the best church in Columbus every Sunday. And I would literally be sitting there like, what? Like what? First of all, why does this matter? Who cares if you're the best, whatever? First of all, who's the judge that says you're the best? Who's the judge that says this church is the best? Why are we as churches in the body of Christ worried about being the best versus working together with other believers in the body of Christ to save more souls? But I've seen that. I've seen that in a lot of sermons where people will say that. We got the best church. We got the best pastor. What is that? What does that mean? Then this next one, honestly, it, it makes me the most, no, I won't say the most, yeah, probably the most uncomfortable out of all the other things that I'm sharing with y'all today is what is this trend now of churches not praying the prayer of salvation at the end of service or at any point in the service? It literally baffles me. Like the whole point of what we do is to go win other souls for Jesus Christ. We open up the doors of the church, hoping that people will come in that need to receive Christ and will have an opportunity to do so. So how, how do we go through an entire service and not once pray the prayer of sal salvation? Oh God. I sat through a church whose sermon, the sermon was all about discipleship and how we go not only gain the word but then go make disciples of others right like this that's all about going to win souls for christ the whole message he just preached la, 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 la. we get to the end and there was no mention of the prayer of salvation there was actually even he opened the altar for prayer and there was a list of things that like to you know if you need to come get prayer for this 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 is this salvation was not even on the list i if I remember correctly, salvation was not even on the, on the list. And there was no explicit, if you're here, you don't know Jesus. We'd like to pray with you. We'd like to, to help you. To Like, there was nothing. Nothing. And these are multiple churches that I've gone to now where I'm like, why aren't we praying the prayer of salvation? Or one church that doesn't even open the altar. They're like, if you need prayer, you can get after service because they're more concerned with getting people out. Like, what? I just... What is the point of the church then? Like, if we're not praying the prayer of salvation, what are we doing? And the last thing I want to bring up for why I'm just having a real hard time with church right now is this whole thing about pastors not being political and, like, refusing to discuss anything that's going on in the political scene, refusing to address the issues of social justice that occur, just re just refusing. And even verbally saying like, that's not our place and that's not our role. Um, it just, it really baffles me. And I remember sitting through a sermon where um, I felt like a pastor was basically mocking Black Lives Matter. I, I heard another pastor preach uh, a sermon or it was part of his sermon I don't know where he basically like condemned people in poverty and basically said the folk are in poverty and it's their own fault and it's the decisions you make and you're choosing poverty and I was just like 
huh? That is such an ignorant perspective. It is an ignorant perspective. I can't even hear how you're trying to connect that to the Bible because that was that came from a place of ignorance, a place of bias. Like, that's from your lens, your middle class to upper class lens. You just can't fathom how anybody could be disadvantaged by a system. You would rather say that, that people in poverty are blaming others rather than taking hold of their situation. Like, there's so much. There's so much to unpack about poverty. I mean, if there's millions of people who are in poverty and who are hungry, and we assume that they're all there because they choose to be. Hmm? Help me understand that, Sway. How, Sway? How? I'm not asking for pastors to get out and campaign and for Sunday sermon to be all about the latest in the news. Absolutely not. But how can we look at the things that are happening, the things with um, immigrant children being detained at the border and the lives that are lost senselessly? I mean, we have so many people dying at the hands of police. We have so many people um, afraid for their lives. So many people who have been disadvantaged by a system in America and we refuse to acknowledge that. We refuse to touch that with a 12 foot pole. We are supposed to look like Jesus. We are supposed to be loved. Jesus fought for the least of these. I don't care what anybody says, Jesus fought for the least of these. He cared about those who were left behind. He was with the sick, the poor. He was healing folk. He was, be, he was among them. He was encouraging them, speaking life, speaking word into them. That's what my God did. So why are we not doing the same? Why, how can we say, like I've heard pastors say, like, that's out there. We live down outside of these doors. And when we come in here, you know, it's all about Jesus, which... Okay, I kind of get what you're saying, but that's also largely problematic. I mean, especially in these churches where it's like, you know the people sitting by, beside you don't even value your life as a black person. They'll engage with you in here and then out there when you're fighting for your life, they turn the other way. Like, how, how do we do that? I feel like we have a responsibility among ourselves because of the fact that we are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. What does that love look like? Love is not just something you say and the hold inside of you. Love is an action word. Love means you're doing something. You're advocating for your neighbor. If somebody just walked around and said, I love you, but never showed you, never, never stood with you, never encouraged you, never, never showed that they value your life, you, you probably wouldn't believe that they love you. Absolutely not. And so that's just where I am. I'm like, where, where is there a church that's willing to rise up and who's willing to to be knowledgeable about the things that we're saying, to acknowledge our role in this. I'm just, I'm really at that phase of life where I can't just go along with church. I can't just go along with problematic stuff. Like I wanna have some encouragement about this situation, but it hurts. It hurts not being connected. It hurts not being a part of the body of Christ um, or feeling not like you're not a part of the body of Christ. It, it feels very, very lonely and very, um, disconnected and yeah so sorry um but my encouragement is to allow if you're in a similar um season as me about a uh, church or if you're having some of the same revelations and just trouble finding your fit I would encourage you to allow that to draw you to your knees and I know I need to do a better job of this of allowing it to draw me to my knees in conversation with God, just asking him to reveal in me what he wants from me. I, I want to continue to grow spiritually. I want God to show me exactly how he wants to use me. Um, I, I have to go get it for myself. I have to go to my word and um, allow his spirit to speak through what I'm reading. I have to allow him to have revelations with me through prayer. I have to stay even closer to God. I mean, I, it, it's everywhere. It, it's on my walls. It's um, in my car, on my phone, on my laptop, always playing worship music for the most part and just allowing it to saturate me because I need that covering because I don't I don't have it right now um and so I, I know I need to um allow this season to draw me even closer to him uh just so I don't lose him because I don't want to lose this relationship my relationship is not on the basis of a church so I don't believe I'll lose it um my relationship is between me and Christ so I'm praying through this season he uh reveals to me exactly what I'm supposed to see out of this and hopefully one day I'll be able to speak to you all from being connected with a church whose fruit reflects Christ so sorry to be somber but 
Um, I vowed on my YouTube to be transparent in the way that God leads me to be. And so I want to share this with you all so you all can know where I am and hopefully to encourage someone if you are in the same place. So if you enjoyed this video, um, I don't always post these kind of videos on Sundays. I usually post my weekly vlog, but we're going to switch it up and just see what happens. I don't think I'll do the weekly vlog every week because my life is not that interesting. So, um, But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, I hope you'll stick around. Press that subscribe button and also so make sure you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the notifications about my videos like why would you want to miss a video so um yeah i hope you enjoyed like this give me a thumbs up shoot some encouragement in the comments if you feel so led and i will see you guys in my next video bye y'all